Thank you for that wonderful reading from the Gospel of John, John's version of the Christmas story, which I will touch on this Sunday, this morning. I just realized when I read the, uh, the Old Testament reading from the prophet Jeremiah that I went all the way down to verse 17. I was supposed to stop at 14, but it was actually last Sunday's uh, reading, the, the cry, the lamentation, Rachel's lament of, uh, from Ramah, which is a, a pretty sad uh, a story of children being innocent, slaughtered. Um, so it just reminded me of last Sunday's sermon, the last Sunday of the year 2013. However, today is year 2014, and I want to begin with a more upbeat, more cheerful, more encouraging message, because last Sunday, um, after worship service, Ken walked out and shook my hand and said, Dad, that was the saddest story. <laughs> that was a sad sermon, <laughs> which is very true, very true. It's a tragic sermon. It was a sad, sad sermon. But we needed to hear that particular part of our human experience in order for our faith to be more authentic and real. However, the Christmas season isn't over yet. We still have the Christmas tree set here in the altar by the, uh, the front because the, according to our Christian calendar, which um, coincides, of course, with the secular calendar of New Year, for us, the Christmas season um, begins and ends um, with the Epiphany. It ends with the Epiphany, which is next Sunday, I mean next week. And so our Christmas season continues. For us as a, a community of faith, Christmas is not just about the holiday, the, the once a year event. But the truth of the matter is that the message of Christmas is basically about the witness of God's love in the lives of our human experience and in our world. And so it permeates, this message permeates throughout the year, throughout all our lives. So in a sense, this whole message of Christmas is about the vitality of our faith, and it's about who we are as people of God, and so it should permeate throughout the year. Not that I suggest we sing Silent Night every Sunday, but because of the importance and the centrality of the Christmas message for our faith, I think it's important to touch on that before we take away the Christmas tree and, and um, other stuff that reminds us of that particular season. How many of you still have your Christmas tree at home? Okay, so how many of you are going to um, take, um, take down your Christmas tree anytime soon? <laughs> Any it's about that time, right? The tree is getting a little dry. Yes, yes. I have my Christmas tree up too, and um, kids were here with me this season, uh, this, uh, during this Christmas break, and so I had a wonderful time with my children, and, and now that one of them is gone, and the other one will be gone tomorrow, and back to Chicago to his school, uh, I think it's about time to take down my Christmas tree as well. But going back to the passage today, um, the message of Christmas. So what is this scriptural reading about today? According to Gospel John. Now, during the early part of the Christmas season, we touched on the Christmas story of Matthew's version, which is basically about Joseph's vision and his dream of God is with us. And so according to the Matthew or Mark or Luke, you do have the story of Bethlehem. You do have the story of the Magi's, the shepherds, the manger scene, and Joseph's dream, and, and Mary's Magnificat, and all these wonderful stories that make up how, what we understand to be Christmas. But what about the Gospel of John? What's his version of Christmas? Did you miss it in our reading today? John's version of Christmas story is found in chapter 1 today, in our reading today. There is no magi. There are no shepherds. There is no Joseph's dream. None of that, right? No Christmas tree. No stars. Well, Christmas tree is not part of the Bible if you think that was part of it, right? What we do have if you read carefully, let's go back to John chapter 1. Here's how it goes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being that came into being in Him. Whoa. Was life. 
And the life was the light of all men and women. And, in the, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And then goes about, um, and there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And let's fast forward a little bit. Verse 10. And he came in the, he, he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, right? Yet the world did not know him, and he came to what was his own. And his own people did not accept him. But the one who receives him, who believed in his name, he gave power. He gave power to become children of God. Born out of the flesh or the will of man or woman, but born of God. Born of the will of God, it says. Right? And in verse 14, here it is. Here's John's version of Christmas story. And the word became flesh. <laughs> right there. I remember these words. Um, my theology 101 class at seminary, I remember uh, the professor. Uh, the, he was the Princeton theologian. And he said, um, here's the theology in a nutshell. The word became flesh. <laughs> the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld grace upon grace, right? The glory of God. That's John's version of the story of Christmas. Interesting, isn't it? So what does this mean? What is this story about? The interesting thing is that other versions of the Christmas story is about the birth of God in Christ Jesus. But what, when you do a, a careful reading of the Gospel of John, John seems to be more concerned, not so much about a babe born in Bethlehem, but is more concerned the focus is on you and me. The focus is that this word became flesh and dwell among us, and for those who receive this truth, God gave them the power to become children of God, okay? That, in other words, you and I have been called to be children of God. And so, what John is concerned is about birth of God in you, who you are as God's child. Now, other versions is more concerned about who Jesus is, that Jesus is God's incarnation. But for John, God, John is most concerned about you and I about us birthing God as children of God. Basically, born not of the flesh or by the will of man or woman. In other words, you and I are not an accident, right? Or someone determining you or circumstances determining your identity, definitive identity of who you are as God's child or children, but that it is by the will of God. In other words, the one who can define you definitively is the one who has called us into being as God's children. And who is that? God. So as we begin our year 2014, I want us to remember that truth and affirm that truth. I don't know what kind of resolutions you may have for this year. Do you have any resolutions this year? I stopped making resolutions, <laughs> but you may have. Maybe some of you just joined a, a gym membership or, or other, um, you know, it, determination to make things happen or make changes in your lives, right? right? But all those things that we may have experienced in our past in the year 2013, what Gospel of John is saying is that whether those experiences of good and bad, your triumphs and defeats, uh, your shame, your pride, whatever those experiences may have been in, okay? They're all descriptive of who you are. They describe your experiences, right? right? And they're, I'm not saying they're not important. Your success, your accomplishments, they're very important. They're, but they're all partial. They describe you, but they don't ultimately define who you are in relation to God. And the scripture says what it defines you is God. So I would like us to do something this morning before we 
venture into year 2014. And I think it's very important for us to do this. Are you ready? Yes? All right. Um, among your other resolutions, I want to add just one for you. Okay? And this might be a very good spiritual practice. Maybe I recommend every day for the month of January, if you could do it every day. Maybe every morning when you get up in the morning. Okay? To look at yourself in the mirror or get up in the morning and recite this truth. I am, can you say that? I am, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Deserving of love and respect. And God will use me to change the world. Okay, let me say it again myself, and maybe, I, I need to say this for myself, because sometimes it feels very awkward when I say this, and I have to remember these, this truth, because that's what John is saying, that God has called us to care for the world that God loves for us. I am a God's child, deserving of love and respect, and God has called me to change the world. Wow, that's amazing. Let's try that again, ready? I am a God's child, Deserving of love and respect, and God has called me to change the world. Well, there's your sermon in a nutshell for today. As we begin our new year, I am a child of God, deserving of love and respect, and God has called me to change the world. God will use me to change the world. This word became flesh and dwelled among us and was the light of all men, this, his life. Sometimes we forget that Jesus came to this world and dwelled among us. The word became flesh. His birth, his life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection. Somehow we have theologized and said, he came to make this obscure payment for our sins. But perhaps the truth of the matter is that it is through this story of Christ that God is trying to convince us, okay, that you and I are God's beloved, as, God, as the Gospel of John points out. That we are God's beloved. And that we are called to care for the world which God loves, which includes our neighbors, our community, and the world at large. And that's why what we do what we do here in the church, day in and day out, to reach out to do our mission, to care for, to pray for one another, is to live out this truth. Because we all know that in heart, at the heart of our faith, we acknowledge that all people are God's children, just like you and I. So may this truth, that indeed I am a God's child, deserving of love and respect, and that God has called me and will use me to change the world. It may sound a little awkward at first, okay? But as you continue to repeat this to yourself, I think you may experience something that is very, not only wholesome, but resonates a certain deep part of you who you really are. The world will continue to try to seduce us, to think us otherwise, it's true, right? That you're never good enough. Somehow these descriptive stuff, our accomplishments, our failures, our triumphs, our defeats, sometimes we, our ego gets in the way because we feel that we've accomplished so much or, or our failures or our shame somehow defines who we are, right? And the world will say to us, was try to seduce us, that somehow these are the truth about who we really are. And it's not easy. But when we venture into year 2014, may your identity as God's child, as God's beloved, continue to sustain you and give you the strength you need, not only for wholeness, but to make a difference in your life, in your, among your neighbors and your loved ones. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.